JP Kloppers is Chief Executive Officer at Brands Eye, and he's joining us today with another view on how brand decisions, important brand decisions, need to be made using insightful data. Welcome, and let's give another perspective on this very important issue. Let's start off with your postulation that consumers and the way in which they interact with brands is changing significantly. But do the brands actually get that? I think more and more brands are getting it. We're seeing quite a few brands moving resources from call centers to social interaction centers because actually if you wait 10 minutes on the phone versus 10 minutes for a tweet, fundamental different experience. The one you end up very frustrated and the other you end up very happy that the brand's gotten back to you. And the social kind of mechanism allows brands to kind of control the process better and then also get back to people in kind of an ordered way rather than mm. just having this uh, awful experience of the call center. But there are deficits and gaps within that continuum then. So how do companies need to change or adapt their strategies in order to maximize this? Shucks, I think the, the tools is obviously the one part, which mm. is where we exist. Mm. I think the other part where, where we see quite a big shift that needs to happen in a, a big corporate is just from an executive level to realize when people speak on social media, it's a source of intelligence, yes, it's a source of understanding what people feel. It's also a source of annoyance as well. And that, that often it, is it can what, what be, yeah, exactly. people don't take that seriously enough. And so that's yeah. why often it gets written off by saying this is just people kind of shouting their mouths off at us. And so let's just focus on our business without realizing that actually these, if you can get to the pain point, it shows you where in your business you need to focus. And I think that's the shift that, that companies need to go through to realize if we, list, if we can listen properly, we can make better decisions around where do we need to allocate resources as a company? Is it towards, if you're a telco mm. kind of network coverage in this area, is it towards the experience on the website? Is it towards the experience in a store? And so knowing those pain points gives you prioritize, prioritization mechanisms. The challenge, of course, is to find the pain point accurately because the pain point is hidden in the data. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you mine down and find that? And how do you know it's the right pain point? So I, I guess you can put it in context. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to see if, if there are 100,000 people speaking online, you know, provided you can get through the noise, you can get to, okay, so there are 100 people speaking about the store. So what? You know, is that important? But if you realize that actually the average number of people complaining about a store is 10, and you've got 10 times more people complaining about store X, you know that we've got an issue there. And so you can allocate resources to it. Also, so it's simple arithmetic in other words. I think it is simple yeah. arithmetic, but it's also, it's kind of putting data in context. So being able to see that 65% of people don't like you because your food quality is bad if you're a hospital, okay, so yeah. people don't come to us because we're, we're a hospital. But if you realize the hospital down the road, like their satisfaction score is 85%. Because realize, they have a better wine list, perhaps, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, wine or drug list, yeah, yeah who knows. Uh, <laughs> part of the problem, of course, is response, uh, JP, in real time. And that poses a huge challenge for brands, is that, you know, they've also got to get on with the day-to-day -day running of the business, but also deal with this overlay in real time as well. How do you find a differentiation in that respect? So I, I think, uh, again... Or demarcation, that's a better word than differentiation, yeah. So we, we use a crowdsourcing approach to root data to where it needs to go. So the urgent stuff gets sent to the people that need to deal with it urgently. And then the same data, because it's an individual. So if you complain at your cell phone provider about something, you need to be dealt with individually. Mm. But then in aggregate, there's a different set of people. So you'd have a research team or a product team who's saying, hang on, Jeremy's just one of 100. We need to actually make some changes in the business as a result of that. So from Brand's Eye's perspective then, where are the real business benefits attached to all of this? So I, th I think what social media gives us is the opportunity to connect a consumer to a decision maker. Mm -hmm. So that, that for me is fundamentally where the benefit lies, is just speeding up that loop so that what consumers care about, the business owners, and it doesn't have to be a business, it can be a politician or a, a local councillor you know, who understands this is what people care about and so I'm going to make decisions accordingly. And it just speeds up that feedback loop, where in the past that feedback loop is done via surveys or speaking to people on the streets or hearing via somebody else mm -hmm. at a bry what's happening. Now you just get that rapid feedback loop to be able to make better decisions quickly. All right, that's the real-time debate. A final question then. What about predictive analytics in this respect? In other words, forecasting what's going to happen. So the, yeah, our, our analysts are always yeah. very cautious with mm. the word predict. 
But I think what, what our hypothesis is, how people feel today influences what they decide tomorrow. No one really argues with that point. So what, what we saw in the Brexit example is where social media like the UK is representative of the, of the population, you can actually get a, a predictive element to what's going to happen in the future just by seeing how people feel today. Mm. So there we could clearly see 56% of people were in the leave category rather than the remain. And so uh, in that sense, yeah, it's predictive. So where companies use that is to be able to see like people threatening to cancel. So if you look across a whole industry and you see in the banking industry that there are more people threatening to cancel and to move to Capitech, you know, how that translates in the real world is actually predictive in its nature because the net result is a lot of uh, mm. customers moving to Capitech in that example. And that is the future in many ways of branding and uh, marketing. JP Klopp is Chief Executive at Brandseye. Thank you very much. Thank you.